Kde? This is a poem about you. About the you who's here seated in this room, about the you in those designer clothes, and about the you in scuffed shoes. I would like to introduce you to yourself. That's all I plan to do. Now, don't roll your eyes yet or go, what does she know about me? For one, I know you're a human being, obviously. And I know that every being has a body. See, I know these things from stuff I was taught in elementary, and now I know even more because I've been to the university, so I know things. Be proud, mommy and daddy. <laughs> now, see, we all like to say everybody is special, but we don't treat everybody like it. Everybody's beautiful, everybody's probably got some good. But does everybody treat everybody the way good things should? Because if you were given a Ferrari, I doubt you would dance with spiked boots on the hood. So why is it okay to be considerate to things made of metal, glass, fabric, wood, but oh so difficult to treat these bodies just as good? So there's a body of somebody whose life rhythm plays discordant notes. Strings screeching a symphony of self-torture in needle-sharp, harmful care. Feeding death into veins direct to the brain, an invitation of toxins made resident and locked in. Orchestrating the body's ruin. Now see, it could be their bodies or any bodies they decide is worthy of poisoning, while the efforts of every antibody is left wasting. It's safe to say that such folks are anti-body, even. Have you met blokes who distort the image of manliness? The ones who believe male is synonymous with violence, callous, and terrifying. Who are sane during work hours, but home hours turn panel beaters, or maybe the dames who mirror them. The ones whose fists inflict pain alongside words most cutting. But it's vilest, though, when the mistreated bodies are so little. Bashed and battered as though to test their mettle. They're fellas who make catcalls when they see exposed bodies and they're ladies who would call starvation a diet just to look like another body. So there are some bodies that folks desire and other bodies that some admire, but when pursuit of the desirable is the cause of bodies suffering, and if the response to every admired desire is self-hate and hurtful lusting, of what help are these affections, really? I know of professional bodies that think themselves God, and in deluded arrogance transformed to negation, the creators nod. Purported surgical bodybuilders whose proven prowess is in the altar, that is, alteration of the perfect remade to the brittleness of wafers, with as much usefulness as ripped, soiled, crumpled paper. Celebrated in media, glorified as the glory of celeste bodies, they whose acts violate bodies in dark-minded extremes akin to terrorists. Now see, science and technology are gifts, everybody knows that. We have been designed creatively, thus we birth creativity. This is fact. But for every positive, there is a negative that exists, just like some drug might not be inherently bad until someone misuses it. Value for the body, abuse to the body. Determined by a choice that is far from random, you see. Now, let's go back to that Ferrari. If you got it washed and polished, would that mean you didn't love it? More like you valued it enough to show it affection and care. So then, take a breather. It's but a contraption. Amazing and valuable though, but primarily to be ridden in. So then it makes sense that these fleshy vehicles we simply must journey through life and require some degree of devotion without becoming something we wind up worshipping. Fam, we were built to last. And in case you haven't gotten that message, you should have gotten it from your being here and that tirelessly beating heart. And some things might happen to mitigate its perfect functionality, but the mere fact that these bodies keep pressing to stay running is one progressive truth that completely astounds me. So, if I tell you you're beautiful, don't take my word for it. Get assurance from words that have been before anyone ever existed. Reason that if time were taken to ensure that every bone duo got along with the ligament, then there is no way so much time would have been put in simply to make you worthless. So then refuse to make your worth less. By playing the amateurs, 
by playing the entertainers to amateurs who claim they can improve perfection and allowing ourselves to be victims to those dedicated to joy's destruction. Because the originals are often better than the sequels, so thank them for the offer, but they can keep their second editions. We're fine, really. I've come to realize that there's only room enough for me within this skin. And subsequently, when I'm given a commitment representing Shiny Ring, it'll expand for the, I don't know, triplets or twins, but the point is there's only so much room. And somebody might disagree, but I think it's best that everybody starts to dance to a certain tune. A tune of truth. Dance in it until you're cloaked in it. Let it cover your birthday suit. So the next time you look into a mirror, you'll see that you really are suitable. For greater things than groveling, your spine encourages you to walk like noble royalty. Let everybody hear its owner calling and let it listen. Let those ears block out the noise making so the truth can settle in. So the next time you're talking about somebody, check that it is a noise you're making. When next you're introduced to fellow artistic mastery, treat him or her with the respect allotted to invaluable beings. And to the beings within these bodies we all see, please listen attentively. Nobody is beneath anybody. Therefore, no body should be treated with cruelly careless insensitivity. Even if everybody chose to be a busybody that does nothing but spread negative energy in a body, let our words and our actions be the difference that embodies the good in humanity.